Hi everyone, what's an alternative to the substitution method for solving systems? We could try the old addition or elimination method. It's the idea of adding equals to equals. In a way, adding equations. Adding equals to equals. And when can this technique apply well? Basically, if you have like terms, like notice here in this system, we have a pair of x terms over here, a pair of y squared terms over here, and a couple of nice friendly constants over here. So when you have a bunch of like terms, then the addition or elimination method might be a good method. Now substitution might work also, but here the substitution method would get messy because if you try to solve, for example, for x in terms of y, then you're going to get kind of ugly fractions and students try to avoid those. It's not wrong and you can use the substitution method, but students might not like the fractions that they get. Uh, and if you try to solve for y, well, instead of solving for y, you might solve for y squared instead. Uh, and even then you're going to get some, some uh, complicated fractions involved. So although the substitution method would work if you solve for either x or y squared, uh, because you get fractions, kind of ugly fractions as a result, uh, maybe it's not so hot. And because we have these like terms here, the addition or elimination method might work better. Now again, the idea behind this method is that you're adding equals to equals. And beforehand, you're allowed to do something. You're allowed to multiply through equations by real numbers, non-zero real numbers. Uh, remember that if you have an equation, it is legal to multiply both sides by any real number except zero. If you multiply both sides by zero, you destroy the equation. Okay, uh, now the addition method, uh, in general, it may not be as helpful in nonlinear systems, but this is a system where we have some nice like terms here. Uh, the problem with nonlinear systems is that you often have uh, a, a, a term here, another type of term there, another type of term there, and it may not be as nice. But this one, it, it, this is a case where the addition method works pretty well. Okay, so now we have the option of either eliminating the x terms right now or the y square terms. Uh, for right now, let's eliminate the y square terms and then solve for x. Just psychologically, it seems nicer to think, oh, we can eliminate the y square terms. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> At least for now. So remember, before we add the equations in a sense, we're allowed to multiply through the first equation by a non-zero real number and or the second equation by a non-zero real number. Now, what is our aim? Well, we would like to multiply one or both equations through by non-zero numbers in such a way that the coefficients on y squared, if you want to eliminate the y squared terms, right? Here we're going to eliminate the y squared terms, although you could eliminate the x terms also, but let's eliminate the y squared terms here. Look at these coefficients, positive five and positive two. Wouldn't it be great if we could multiply through these equations by non-zero numbers in such a way that these two coefficients are opposites and therefore these two terms with the y squareds are opposites because then when you add the equations, these cancel out. What do I mean by adding equations? The idea is that if we add equals to equals, we get equals. So let's say we have a solution, x comma y, that works for both, okay? Well, what other equation would be legitimate? Uh, imagine a balanced scale. Imagine a balanced scale. Uh, let's see. Huh. And let's say that in both the scales, you put uh, a rock with the same mass. Rocks with the same mass. All right. Basically, basically the same weight. Let's say the same weight. Rocks with the same weight. And on top of those, we add feathers that have the same weight.
The idea is that if you add equals to equals, you get equals. If these are equal weights and these are equal weights, then the scales should still balance out. When you add equals to equals, you get equals. So if the first equation holds for a given x comma y, and the second equation holds for a given x comma y, then when you add the left-hand sides and the right-hand sides, the resulting equation will be an equation that, uh, that has x comma y as a solution. All right, so what numbers can we use to multiply through on the top and the bottom to make these opposites? Well, what coefficients might we, might we aim for? Instead of a positive 5, why don't we aim for a positive 10? Let's aim for a positive 10. And over here, instead of a positive 2, let's aim for... Well, okay, let's aim for what? How about a negative 10? So I'd like to make this coefficient a positive 10. I'd like this to make this coefficient a negative 10 so that we get cancellations when we add equals to equals. All right, well, 5 times what gives me 10? 5 times 2 equals 10. And 2 times what will give me negative 10? 2 times what will give me negative 10? 2 times negative 5 will give me negative 10. So for the first equation, I want to multiply both sides by 2. Multiply through by 2. I'll, I'll put blue here. I'm going to multiply the first equation through by 2, and I'm going to multiply the second equation through by negative 5, so that these coefficients are opposites, and therefore these terms are opposites. Let's do that. We multiply through the first equation by 2. We multiply through the second equation by negative 5. OK. So we multiply both sides of the top equation by 2. We get 4x plus 10y squared equals 70. On the final, I would allow, uh, on a final exam, I would allow a calculator, by the way. If you multiply both sides by negative 5, 7x times negative 5 is negative 35x. 2y squared times negative 5 is negative 10y squared. And 14 times negative 5 is negative 70. Now, we wanted these two to be opposites. We made it so. Uh, it turns out these are opposites, but that's more luck. <laughs> what happened here was more luck. We were lucky. These didn't have to be opposites over here. So then when we add equations, informally speaking, when you add these together, we get negative 31x. This plus this equals 0. We eliminate the y squared terms. And these two add up to zero, uh, although they didn't have to add up to zero for this process to work well. Negative 31x equals zero. Divide both sides by negative 31. What's zero divided by two? It's zero. What's zero divided by three? It's zero. What's zero divided by negative 31? It's zero. Uh, by the way, What's negative 31 divided by 0? Just checking with you. <laughs> that would be undefined. That's messed up. Okay, So you couldn't pull this stunt. But 0 divided by negative 31, that's OK. We have x equals 0. So if we have any ordered pairs that work as real solutions, we need the x coordinate to be 0. But then what could y be? Do we have a corresponding value for y? Could there be more than one? Ah. Let's take x equals 0, and let's plug into any one of these four equations that had x, or, uh, that had x and y in it. So we could plug this into here, or here, or here, or here, before we touch the equations. 
I guess I should do this. <laughs> I can take x equals zero, plug into here, plug into the top equation, plug into this equation, or plug into this equation. In my notes, uh, I went with the first equation over here, and I'm going to plug x equals zero into the first equation. I'll go back to the warnings in just a moment. Okay, so we have two uh, x plus five y squared equals 35. Remember we have x equals zero, plug in or substitute in x equals zero. So it turns out we get a zero plus five y squared. That's five y squared equals 35. Divide both sides by five, we get y squared equals seven. And be careful, if y squared equals seven, what can y be? Be careful. If y squared equals seven, what can y be? Plus or minus, please remember that. I'll put that in red. <laughs> plus or minus the square root of seven. Many people forget the plus or minus. All right. So actually, if x equals zero, y could be one of two values, root seven or negative root seven. Let's write both order pairs down. So one order pair has x equals zero and y equals positive root seven. Another order pair has x equals zero and y equals negative root seven. Uh, some people might write this as uh, the ordered pair zero comma plus or minus the square root of seven. Some instructors may accept that, but especially when you go on to calculus three, math 252 at Mesa, be very careful because the plus or minus symbol uh, can be misread sometimes. Uh, for example, in Calc 3, what if you see something like this? An ordered triple that goes plus or minus something, plus or minus something, and plus or minus something. Well, what would this mean? I, I mean, how many solutions would we have? Do we have two solutions? One where we take all pluses, one where we take all minuses or negatives? Or do we have eight solutions where we could have either of these together with either of these together with either of these. So anything goes. So the plus or minus symbol can be ambiguous. Here it's not so ambiguous. Uh, although remember in trig, I'm, uh, we saw identities where you said make a choice. <laughs> uh, so if you want to be absolutely clear, then separate out the two solutions. Here are the two ordered pairs. These are the two solutions to our system. So again, there's a problem with potential ambiguity with this. Um, although the problem of ambiguity is much more severe in Calc 3, where we go, what's the deal? Do we take all the tops and then all the bottoms or is it anything goes or what is it? <laughs> so Calc 3 might have to write things out. Now actually, before we go on to our next example, uh, I wanna do a few things. I want to go back to my warnings and then I wanna talk graphs. First of all, Remember to multiply the right-hand sides by the numbers. So over here, when we talked about multiplying through the top equation by two and the bottom equation by negative five, remember to hit the right-hand sides as well as the left-hand sides. A lot of people, they, they work on the left-hand sides, they hit the equal sign and then they stop, <laughs> they get tired. <laughs> Please hit the right-hand sides by these numbers as well. Okay, I guess I'll use blue here. Or how about black? Let's use black. Multiply the right-hand sides as well. Okay, second. Um, oh, why didn't we multiply the second equation by five and not negative five? I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. Um, so basically here we multiply by negative five. Why didn't we multiply by positive five? Well, remember, if you multiply by positive five, you get a positive 10 here, and then you'd be subtracting. And remember, folks, we saw this in long division, right? We're going to see this in matrices. Uh, we saw it before with vectors also. You are much better at adding and combining like terms than subtracting. So our goals here are positive 10 and negative 10 as coefficients. We want to deal with the signs early on because you are much better at adding and combining like terms than subtracting. If you had made both of these tens, you would have had to subtract. And some people have problems doing that mentally, especially if you have negative signs in here. Okay, we generally prefer to add. All right. 
So use opposites. Third, we were lucky. We were lucky that uh, we got zeros on the right-hand side. They don't have to be zeros all the time. All right. Now, I want to discuss the graphs. Okay, now the real solutions to a system correspond to what points for the graphs of the equations involved. These are intersection points. Remember, these real solutions correspond to intersection points between the two graphs. Remember these two original equations. Now let's graph these. Now take a moment. If you graph these, what do you think we're going to get? And also, I want to address something else. We had x equals zero. We had one x value give us two different y values. So look at our two solutions. What I'm saying is that we have two points that are on both graphs, in fact, where we have an x coordinate of zero and the y coordinates are different. So these two graphs do not represent x as a function of y because we have one x leading to two different y coordinates. Keep these things in mind. How do you graph these two equations? Let's see. 2x plus 5y squared equals 35. Let's move this over here. 2x plus 5y squared equals 35. Let's zoom out. Hey, look at this. It's a parabola opening leftward. See, if you were to solve this for x in terms of y, uh, you'd be getting x equals, okay, so um, you have 35 minus 5y squared, but then you're dividing all that by 2. All right, so it's 1 half times all that. And notice I just recolored the graph. These are equivalent equations. x as a function of y, all right? Uh, and I can even bring the 1 half in. 35 halves minus 5 halves y squared, all right? So x equals, how do you graph x equals minus y squared? Remember that? x equals the opposite of y squared. That was a parabola opening to the left, all right? The 5 halves uh, does some stretching, all right? Uh, the 5 halves does some horizontal stretching, actually. And then the 35 halves moves it. All right, so we get this green graph here. Bottom line, it's a parabola opening to the left. Okay, uh, same as this guy down here. 7x plus 2y squared equals 14. Parabola opening to the left. So look here, the blue graph and the black graph, they're both symmetric about the x-axis. Uh, that helps explain the symmetry between these two points, uh, 0 comma root 7 and 0 comma negative root 7. Okay, look at these intersection points. Here's 0 comma root seven, root seven is about 2.6. Here's zero comma negative root seven. So these points here are the two intersection points that are on both the black graph and the blue graph. Zero comma root seven and zero comma negative root seven. Uh, notice the graphs fail the vertical line test. They do pass the horizontal line test. All right. Next up, uh, how many solutions can a system have? And remember, how many solutions can a linear system of equations have? Next time.